Hey guys, this is Lava Thor and welcome back to Lavacraft. Well, sort of. So I was able to recover the world download of Lavacraft Season 2 through FileZilla. No thanks to Shockbite, but I was able to access the files and download it remotely and throw it on a single player world. And this is what we have. We're still doing Season 3, but I was able to get this. Some of the mods and, and data packs might be different, so there might be a little bit of corruption. But I figured, hey, let's do a world tour that we got it working. Woo! So I'm going to go through, and we're going to look at all my stuff I built. Then I'm going to check out some other, couple, other people's things. And yeah, so let's get right into it. So I guess we'll go ahead and start with my main island. There's been a few additions here. Uh, but we have the bridge that led to Heavenly's base and the main continent. And then my first wizard tower. I have a lot of these fields and wheat things. They're mostly for form, but they actually have a little function. If I needed potatoes, I gathered a lot of potatoes in there. Um, we'll get my wizard tower. Actually, let's get right over here. The first build, I think, was this little cabin tent I made as everyone just danced around and goofed off. Uh, this was my first little starter base. So I have wolves in here. Where'd you guys come from? I don't remember where I got you from. And I lived out of this. Um, this was my first little kind of starter base. And it was a little cabin tent thing with some farms. Looks like my, all my cows are dead or gone. And some simple little starter stuff. Uh, that was a hole I filled in. And then I built my first actual like b building here, which is this little wizard tower. I love this wizard tower. Let me go free cam. I think it came out really nice. Uh, this I used as my main base throughout the season. As it has a decent manual storage system. But it has a little bed area, enchanting table spot and my storage over here i do like the design it came out very nice uh it even has a nice little basement area if we head on down there with a lot of little things little lava farm water farm dripstone it has this little auto smelter which came in very handy look it's still full of junk i never had finished using but if we come back here it, it had a weird system that i ended up not using it's using a normal one it's not perfect but it did the job so i'm not going to complain too much uh, here I've used for copper bees, a lot of stuff. I never actually came with a permanent solution to it. And then I have the map of our kind of our area, which I think is pretty nice to have, especially at the end. There's another exit here. Here I have everyone's heads. I think I got everyone's but Nyx and Heavenly's. I don't have a spot for her. Uh, I was going to get them from Shad, buy them from him. But I think everyone else's I got. A couple of them aren't killed by me, but I did the best I could. If your head is here, leave a comment in the comments and tell me which one is yours. Uh, we have my armor from, ooh, they look good with these texture packs, from the tournament, the March Madness tournament, and the two times I lost here. If we go ahead and head upstairs past the library spot, we have a collection point. This is where I was collecting stuff. I was going to try and collect a dragon egg of every time we killed the end dragon with people. I only got two. Um, I was trying to collect all the music discs, all the sherds. I think I'm missing one sherd. I was collecting all the horns. I did get all the horns. That was a big deal. And then all the templates, and I did get all the templates. So a couple of successes there. If we head up one more, we have the nether portal, which is just kind of there. You know, nothing too big. Uh, I'd fly in and out of it. Oh, what are you doing up here? And yeah, that is my uh, my, my main base. I think it came out really nice. On the island, I do, do have a few other things. Probably my favorite build out of everything in the server is this little gazebo. Here, uh, I don't have my armor anymore, but I had boots with Frostwalker on them. And if you have Frostwalker boots on them, you stand on a furnace uh, fire, like a campfire or magma in survival, you don't burn. And this is where I beat uh, Nick. Nick, me, Nick had a challenge off to who could last the longest on fire because he didn't know about the Frostwalker thing. And we went a good like 20, 30 minutes and then he finally gave up. And that is the diamond block I won with the bet and I beat Evil Nick. <laughs> if we continue on, we have my iron golem farm, which looks really nice. But it it had kept having issues where the villagers would forget these are their beds. And it doesn't count as a village and it wouldn't spawn iron golems. So I, I think what happened is when the server would do like resets, it would like cause them to forget. Um, but I got out of the iron form, and Milo opened an iron shop that after that I just used his, you know, not a big deal. Uh, we'll go down there later. We do have the sniffer sanctuary. I kind of like this, the mechanics of the sniffer, and it kind of forces you to do this. In case you're wondering, this is Mod Mud's one pixel lower, and then it's covered in a big hopper network. 
And yeah, they all just connect up to a single chest on the ground. I'll show you guys. Um, I think it's over here. Right here. And yeah, it's pretty much full. Uh, only one chest is full, so it's not overflow. But but I like the design of it. I had a spot where a couple sniffers were dying. So I put buttons and fence gates and tried to like flush out any spot where they could like hop up and kill themselves. And that seemed to fix it. There are two left. We never did name them. We do have the two surviving ones still. And I love this little urn with the sniffers on them. I got all four of that. So it came out pretty nice. I really like it. We did update the wall here. If you guys remember, we had anything past this side, which was to the south, was PvP. You could kill each other and stuff. So I did actually make a wall here. Uh, I don't think I finished it. No, see, this side isn't done, sadly enough. Um, but I got this side done. And I did end up tricking people across it and killing them. So... That was kind of nice. If we continue on over here, I had started working on a copper farm. I wanted to do a copper farm using the reinforcement system, but I didn't want to build in the end, which was a mistake. And so let's head down to that first, then we'll talk about the tower. So if we head down here, here's my my first copper farm. And it uses a spawner right here, a zombie spawner. And if you're close enough, the zombie spawner will activate i will drop zombies and they'll come down here and fill this up. And then what I plan to do was use the reinforcement system. So the zombies have a small chance of having this special stat. Or if you hurt them, they'll call in other zombies. There's ranges and all that. And I tried to expand the edges out here, you notice here, to incorporate that without having, you know, too much other stuff spawning. But it just, it just really wasn't working well. Uh, I had to light up a bunch of these caves, all these issues, and it just it just didn't work. And I spent like m a month working on this thing. And yeah, it got me a little bit of copper. It got me some stuff, junk mostly. Uh, but it was a really fun build to make, getting all this copper. Look at all this copper. Most of this was actually mined out. I also have a geode here that I went and had and kept and just was using that uh, to get amethyst since it was right here anyways. Uh, but it looks amazing. I think the build came out very nice for this underground kind of section. I also have kind of a spot to let copper kind of oxidize up here. Uh, I do have some light switches actually to like explore and turn stuff on and off. So if I can find them. I think this is a door. Yeah, that's the door that goes out. Where's the light switch? Because you can turn on lights in there. I made a whole lighting system. Is it that? Oh, here it is. So it goes here, and yeah, see the lights are on. Let's fly around. We'll just go to free cam. I actually made a whole wiring network underneath it to connect up all of the uh, the lamps. And that way, if you wanted to, you could light it up. It'll make stuff not spawn, and you got here and work on it. You know, if you want to fly up and fly back down. And there was a spider spawner here too. I could have done something with it, never did. But it fortunately just didn't work. It, it wouldn't really add many more zombies in. I don't know, I need to, I think the, uh, the drown farm, if you want to do it right, you need to do it in the end, and you got to do it like an AFK long-term thing. I did uh, have to build a staircase that led this thing all the way up to the tower, and then my idea was I was a wizard being in towers, so I had to build a tower over it. So my idea was I was going to be the wizard lava, make a big emerald city. Um, I didn't really get to that, but one of the, while testing out that, I came up with this idea of a tower design like this, and I basically just recreated that for this one. I think it came out pretty nice. I like the big uh, top part thing. The, the, I don't know if you call it the ball, the bell, whatever. Uh, but with the concrete and the copper and uh, the wood type, I think it looked pretty nice. I really like the bottom where it has the coral and the crystals. Give it kind of that fantasy magical feel. It, I think it looks pretty good. And then a little bit of overgrowth here. Uh, if we head inside, it does actually have function. I, I, you know, put some decorations here. This heads down to the copper farm. But if up here, I have actually a bee farm. We have a honeycomb here. And there's actually a few bees in here. And if we go up to the next floor, there are more bees. Another, another set. And if we go up one more, I believe there's another one. And here's a third set. And I don't know if I ever did a fourth set. No, I didn't do a fourth set, but three sets. And I have all the hoppers from all the bees connected up to gather honeycomb or shears, shears, and then connect up to go to this chest. So it actually fills up pretty fast. And then I made a shop, I'll show you guys later, and that sells all that. And it's pretty full. So that was a big success. And let's head to the top of the tower.
if we go and head all the way to the top here, watch out chickens. Um, yeah, we all have a nice little good view here. That stuff's still loading in. But while I was building this, I threw a chicken egg I had gotten and it became a chicken. And then every time I come visit, he dropped a few more eggs and throw them. And over the course of like probably a hundred eggs, it just became more chickens. So I think if I remember right, that's happened. Or someone pranked me and I just didn't realize it. Uh, but it's a very nice build. It took forever with the copper. Don't build the copper, it's the worst. And it came out very nice. If we continue on over to this monstrosity, this is my second drowned form. Um, let me go to free cam. It'll be easier to fly around. I needed, uh, so this is technically a river, this island. If you look, uh, if I fly over to it, it says stony shores, plains. Uh, if I get closer, river. See, it says river there, top left. Uh, yeah, this little island's like a quote unquote river. It's a weird, weird Minecraft mechanic. And I guess drowned have better spawn rates in rivers. And rivers don't matter about how high you go. So I just put flowing water at the top and then the water flows all down. Drown will spawn in flowing or regular water. Since it's flowing down, they'll get pushed down to the bottom, fall through these signs, get funneled together and down to this hole. And they should land with one, either one or a half a heart. And then you can just kill them. And that was to get tridents, because I had this whole plan with tridents that uh, didn't pan out very well. Actually, the trident part worked, but the, what I needed the trident for didn't work. But I built a, a functional build around it too. I built uh, this nice building, which I constructed in creative mode and came up with a neat design. Again, lots of copper. I love the tiered copper roof design, as well as kind of these docks and structures on the outside. The idea was supposed to be sort of something that seemed a little more ancient, monolithic, and outstanding. And of course, going with the theme of towers, I had to build another tower. Uh, if we head inside, the inside is pretty simple. It's just this main little thing. I never did get around to decorating it. And you can come here, grab your sword, and just, oops, I didn't mean to do that. And just smack them until they die, and they, you know, drop the tridents and stuff. We even have a few, st look, I still have a bunch of tridents in there. Uh, but yeah, that was that. If we head downstairs, the idea was to get tridents, uh, use them to light up during a thunderstorm charge creepers. Use the charge creepers to blow up mobs to get their mob heads, because I was trying to collect all the mob heads. But apparently, look, there's even one creeper still in this cell. Let's go look. Yeah, there he is. Hi, creeper. Um... The problem with creepers is it only works on the natural heads. So like any of the, oh man, there's tons of mobs down here. Any of the heads from the data pack aren't going to drop from a charged creeper. So I blew up like a million sheep over here and none of their heads dropped. But I had a whole system here. This, this was actually pretty cool. I'd wait for a thunderstorm, which is a very small chance. I'd, it happened. Creepers, mobs would spawn here. Hopefully creepers, I'd fly, fly back till they get. Put a cart, cart would pick them up. It'd pull them back in and then put them right in the cell, then I'd block the cell off. I got a couple creepers doing that, and I get whatever mobs I want, send them off, and blow them up. This thing was all water, I eventually dug it all out. And yeah, that's the bottom. Another project failed. So yeah, two drowned farms both failed, which was a pretty big bummer, look full of rotten flesh here. Uh, but I think the point is Minecraft is to have fun and build, and I think the build came out very nice, so success. And I built a little um, raft here with a guy fishing. Look at this guy, he's like fishing. He's catching in that, catching. That pretty, pretty, pretty cool with a little bamboo boat. Uh, let's continue on past my bridge. We'll come to other people's builds at the end. I'm gonna showcase all mine and then we'll continue on other people's. If we head to the shopping district, I have I think three or four shops here. We'll go to my first one, uh, my bookshop, which let's see, what was it called? The, the wordsmith, that's right, the wordsmith. My, I think this was my first shop. Um, so I have villagers back at my base. I forgot to show that. I'll go show those. They're just stuck in a hole. And I built this little little house to uh, sell books. I think it came out decent. Let's go ahead inside. Inside I have, I used, um, instead of barrels to sell, barrels are for the diamonds, I just used chiseled bookshelves to sell the books. And I think that was such a cool idea. The only problem is it doesn't showcase their names. So I had to put titles like what they were and stuff and adjust the prices and all that. But there's a ton more up here. And yeah, these were all mostly full. Uh, pretty much every enchantment you could think of, you know, we had things like Aqua Affinity 
protection, thorns, and even the super rare sore three. We had a ton of sore threes. I think no one. I don't think anyone ever bought them though. People didn't use elytras on here that much, but I don't. I think sore three or any sore one, two, and three are great, great enchantments. This thing made me probably a good five hundred diamonds, mostly from neon. I think neon died like four times and bought bought new enchants every single time from him. So yeah, there's that. Uh, next off is my floating Castlevania a castle tower because you know we're going with towers this is this is sort of like a wide tower but this one oh my gosh it came out a little smaller than i thought but it's very tall but now you wanted to sell rockets and elytra and stuff because people needed them and so if we head on down here here's the main shop if we have our box of rockets so a box of rockets i don't think i sold a single one no one bought rockets but then I also sold like a, a box of holding. It was a light trend, some rockets, and a little like pamphlet talking about it. Uh, I have my Elder Guardians. These are actually Elder Guardian heads. I have three Elder Guardians here. They're the Guardians of the shop. They come alive and attack you if you attack it. Uh, the cool thing about this shop is it's very simple and simplistic. If we head on up, I have a statue of me because I have an ego. And that's, that's the shop and you fly out of it. It does have this cool flickering light. Uh, I don't know if it works right here. But the original server, I had it with two redstone signals. Yeah, see, one of them is broken. But they offset, so it kind of flicker back and forth. One of them is not working, though, because the world down mode. But it would kind of give it this, like, sort of flickering feel, which was really cool. And it never broke, except for now, apparently, it did. And then, obviously, it's there's this big crystal in the bottom that's keeping it hovering, some sort of, like, gravity stone. And, uh, you know, if you don't have a lot, if you need a buy light, how do you get to the shop? Well, in the nether... I have a portal and inside the stone part is the portal so you have to walk through the portal to get to it if you don't have elytra or you just fly no problem my other shop with the bees um because i really want to do bees was this guy over here the honey trap bean honey shop i was trying something a little bit different not with a tower just i guess there's a tower in the middle you can count it but just trying some different building techniques and trying some different styles uh, but let's go and showcase this off i really was working with colored glass and the honey style which I think came out superb over here. A lot of little details on this, and I, I, it just looks fantastic. A lot of these builds, I think, look pretty good. Inside, though, it still has form and function, too. Uh, let me go ahead and go in. If we head here, uh, I think this texture pack has this look a little different. That's supposed to be black, not white. But the idea was this was gold armor with netherite trim. And it looks really weird with this texture pack, but it was supposed to be black and white. Normally without the texture pack, it looks really nice. And it looks like a bee. It's supposed to be like a bee statue. Oh, let me close the store. There's bees in here. But yeah, I would sell things, a lot of bee stuff. So I have honeycomb. I have, you know, you know, all the stuff you need, actual honey. And then over here, I was selling beehives and that too. So I need the bee heads I had. Uh, I got the nests. And then, of course, you know, hives as well. And I put a few you know, bee, beehives in here for them to chill out. They could escape. I love doing arches. I love the copper arches. I was trying to work with copper a lot. I really like copper. Uh, but if we head up to this little attic spot you can't get to, there's actually a few bees in here at the little flower there. So that way, as you're looking on, you can actually see the bees in there during the day just kind of chilling. That one is just chilling. And I think that was a nice little touch. A very it's supposed to be a lot more organic and more nature kind of like. Uh, just a lot of a lot of stuff going on if anything though I feel like there's a little bit too much would be the only problem little too many details, but I mean You know go big or go home, right? Uh, the last thing I worked on was that banner Let me head back to my tower and show you what I'm talking about this guy the March Madness PvP tournament This isn't a mod or a data pack or anything. This is an actual just straight-up map Let me copy one if you notice here. It's the map and what I did was I flew out to a big spot in the ocean like everyone does and just made this. And getting the colors and stuff right was a little bit hard, but I played around and I think it came out really nice. Uh, here it is. Way out to the west, I just took a map uh, over the ocean, set it down, and just kind of flat, you know, just made a big platform with stone and just started going to town with the pieces. So if you notice the map here, um, if you do certain styles and designs with colors and look at like this, you know, these, this, you know, we got these leaves, mangrove roots, leaves for the brown, pumpkins for this orange, uh, the dirt, uh, we have, what was it? I think these were, 
Yeah, gold plates. So I couldn't do gold because gold was too expensive for gold blocks. So I found gold plates gave the same effect and there are just a lot less gold. Um, different colors gave different designs and it came out very nice. And we use that for Shad's PvP arena, which I'll show next. That's that's everything I've made for season two. Season two was cut short. We only did about, what, six months, half a year because our server host basically died on us and when it wasn't willing to work with us to help get it fixed. So we're moving servers and we're just gonna start season three. But let's go ahead over to Shad's base and show his arena, his banded island, which is amazing. Here's Shad's humble little base, the little Eye of Sauron. Uh, I'm not gonna showcase, it's, it's a little cramped, um, but check out his videos if you wanna see more of his base. But right over here next to it, if we head on over to this island. So start with this island. I'm not going to show every uh, right now. I, I just this boat. So you you pretend like you landed on the island with this boat. Like you just traveled here. You get off the boat. You go up the docks. This wonderful staircase. And then you come into this view of this grand uh, arena of this Coliseum. He has kind of a storage shed over here. Uh, kind of the center town. Oh, I have a shop over here. I sell horns. I forgot about this. <laughs> I, said that one. I don't know why the gilded. I just want to use a gilded for something. I think Milo had a shop where he'd give you some free tools and uh, some carrots, some other stuff. And he has a little camp of some of the contestants and then his arena. We'll come to the arena in just a second. But over here, you he built this wonderful town, uh, which one of his final things he made. I don't know if he ever made a video on it, but it, it came out very nice. He was, had all these plans to expand it to the whole island. Uh, stronghold, castle, towers, mines, everything. This whole island is going to be amazing. Too bad I cut, cut short. But we did do a PvP arena where everyone signed up. And we actually had people play off. Um, I believe the very end it was Shad that won. We had someone drop out and so Shad was a runner up. And Shad ended up winning in the very end. I forget the exact details of all the contestants. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. The arena itself was amazing. Um, he built this whole thing. He has a time lapse of it all and everything. There's actually like underground spots you can like walk through. Let me see, right like here. Yeah. And some traps, there's like lava traps, arrow traps and stuff like that. He even has like contestant quarters. So like the two sides would go to their rooms, uh, put their extra stop bed, drop down to here and like go out. So it was pretty well built. I really liked it. But uh, yeah, it came out amazing. I, I love this arena. Um, it just was, it's just so nice. Shad did such a good job working on this. And it will always be remembered as such a bit, as such a cool thing to have. And I love that he was doing this whole lore and town to build around it. And just amazing job, Shad. Kudos all around. Um, Shad has a lot more. I don't think I'm going to showcase much more of his stuff. He mostly was working on this. He did join a little bit later in the season. But check out his stuff for Season 3. He's going to do some great stuff. Let's move on to Rogue. I'll show you some of the stuff Rogue made. Rogue was neighbors just a little bit north of me on this really long, weird island. And he's planned to turn this island into a whole city. Uh, he was slow going at it, but he was getting... Oh, I forgot. I, uh, I made him this um, dripstone trap. Um... <laughs> Don't fall in there. You'll be trapped. Uh, don't ask. Um, but he had started building this whole little city of like this Japanese Asian style. We go through. I think he had his shop here. He had a coal and bamboo shop, which I spent a lot of money at. I think some of my money's still in here. Um, yep, there's some of my diamonds. Okay. Um, so that was pretty cool. I bought a lot from that. His bamboo and coal shop. He had a book club. Where you could write a book and put it in here. A couple people I think did. And yeah, we have a couple of books. And I thought that was such a cool idea for people to come put their stories in. I want to do that again for next season. Have a place where people can put stories and have like a library almost. He was working on a fish shop. I think it's mostly just for decorations like a sushi shop. I think the banners add a nice touch to it. Uh, and then here he has a lookout tower. And then he was building some sort of like blacksmith or something here. And I think he has, oh yeah, his skeleton horses. I wanted to steal them all from him. I need one of their heads. And yeah, I think that's all he really did. We shared a skelly farm over here. 
and where I got basically all my bones and stuff. Let me just head down there real quick. It's nothing special, just a simple little skelly farm with some chests, you know. Um, just something, you know, quick and easy and to the point. But it worked out really well. The weird thing we found it is because when we were looking around, there was a here, this pillar. Like, this is naturally formed. I don't know why it generated, like, the chunk or the block here. Like, just a solid square. But that is so weird. Uh, there's Seth's house. He built a house that never came back. Seth, we miss you. Come back. Uh, Neon built a little base here. We'll showcase that real quick. Um, he has some island stuff, but I don't know where it's at, so I'm probably not going to show that. Uh, but he does have a quaint little base over here as he built inside. Just a uh, very nice, very natural looking cave. Hey, Froggy. And some stuff here. Here and here. He got busy with other stuff. Neon, we miss you. Uh, let's continue on to the shopping district. There's some more uh, buildings and stuff over here. Uh, we do have Heaven's Wonderful House that she made. And she was working on a few other stuff before she got busy with life. Some pens and a sniffer thing. She does have her first shop, which just sold some general blocks. I uh, it got a bit a little bit abandoned, so I had some spider webs. But I still I I bought a lot of sand. I think I bought all the sand, sand dirt, and gravel from this place. So early on, it was a great resource. We have Dyson's two shops, which he updated one of them. One of them he rebuilt, and it looks pretty good here. In this one, it's just uh, lumber logs. If you need logs, birch, oak. And then more up above in the upstairs here. So that was pretty nice that he updated to sell logs. Logs are always a big resource. You always make money selling logs. They take time to chop down. So no big deal there. And then his second shop, which was kind of built a little bit later. It's just called The Shop. I don't know why the downstairs is empty, but all the products are upstairs. Odd. And yeah, he just sells a bunch of different stuff you need. General merchandise, that kind of stuff. Things that are just kind of everything. I think a neat idea. Kind of like a little bit of a Walmart. Uh, the shop is a neat idea for it. He has, well, I think, one of his earlier builds, his rocket shop. Where he just was selling rockets. That's where I was buying them until I got my gunpowder farm made. Uh, chicken built what we call the turtle. I'm not sure what or how or whatever, but it's it's there. I think it was supposed to be a KFC, actually, now that I think about it. But who knows? Um, and then, who knows what this is. Is this part of the KFC? I don't know. This, oh, you know what? This is a, a map glitch. This is this is that terrain glitched out over here. So I think that's just a chunk error. So ignore that. That's not supposed to be there. That's probably just an artifact of the world download getting corrupted or something. Neon did make this really good community farm here that has all of these crops. He did capture, I believe, a phantom in here. Where are you? Yeah, this phantom and this pillager in here that are still here to this day. They're still alive, man. That was pretty cool. I like that. But he had a bunch of farms for people. Uh, we had the diamond button over here with the main spawn camp. Uh, one of the things we had a bunch of command blocks set up. So we had a world border of 500. And you could pay a diamond to expand the world border by one. I'll throw it and show you guys right now. I think our world border was pretty limited and we expanded out to, I think we started at 500 and we expanded out to 12,000. We come down into the little diamond room. It's just some command blocks um, with a little hopper system set up to count them. Um, but this is how many diamonds we spent. And then we have a second one. Let me show you that real quick. If we had a thousand blocks into the wilds, the PVP areas, we made a diamond block button here and Shad had in survival decorated this. That goes in the nether so you can make another trip here. But if you come up here, you can spend, normally you can spend one diamond, increase it by one block. The world border, you can spend a diamond block to expand it by 10 so you get one for free. Also, it just goes faster because you have to wait till the lamps turn off. Otherwise, it just eats your diamond and goes away. So this is a lot faster way of doing it. Uh, again, let's check out how many diamonds are here. And there's quite a bit. We, we spent a lot. Uh, Shad had gone and spent a couple thousand because uh, he was trying to steal all the trims from me. That that evil little trickster. Uh, let, but let's head on back. But yeah, that's how the diamond button system worked. And here we have some stuff from the beginning of the server. A lot of our early people played on. Uh, Nick made a, a core thing. He started working an airship. We have Anya who loves the color pink and made some different structures. She had her base here and then a little forest. She has a second base she made later on, Love Hearts, 
and I believe she has some structures over here she developed as well. Just little little tributes here and there, which was pretty nice. Uh, this guy, which I'm not even sure what that is. No idea. <laughs> I didn't come over here very often. I didn't come to this side of the server. Uh, but she has her love temple, don't ask, and over here. <laughs> And where people could just basically, it's like leave a penny, take a penny thing. And yeah, that was that. Uh, inside of this big mountain is sort of a dome. And I believe Dyson put a lot of his starter base stuff there. So we can definitely check that out next. We come down into the dome. Dyson has a few structures here, nothing too big. I think one of his temporary bases, I don't think he used it a whole lot. Just kind of like over here, his... Oh, industrial base. But yeah, just a uh, simple base. Uh, one of the dragon eggs. It wasn't the original one, Dyson. I got the first one. That's a copy. Um, <laughs> and then obviously some farms, some automation, um, and some other stuff going on here. Oh yeah, villager stuff. Is everything underground? No, oh, there's something there. Not much else. Uh, so he got some stuff. Oh, heads. Uh, he got some stuff down here. I know he has like two or three other bases. So we'll see if we can find them. If not, not a big deal. Next, we have Milo. Milo joined late and then left really early. He, he did about one thing. He did it so fast, too. He built this monstrosity of an amazing base. Milo, you need to play Minecraft more. Um, this thing is amazing, though. It looks very uh, steampunky. Punk? I don't know. It looks cool. I love the giant gear on it. I think it's supposed to be a gear. Connecting up, uh, but I believe it is as functional too. He was selling iron. Look at that. He has an iron head And then he has different redstone contraptions. Oh, yeah, he has an iron farm in it. Here it is. It's like a multi-layered iron farm Yeah, see look at that three layers four layers four and he was just I just it was so cheap I just come buy my iron from him. No big deal. Uh, he has a few factories. I think he was working on... Oh, he has a gunpowder farm that's identical to mine, I think. We both have like the same iron gold, iron gunpowder farm, which I'll showcase that stuff at the very end. And yeah, he, he started doing a lot of stuff really quickly and fast. Milo, we miss you. Uh, so we were glad to have him. Look at his banner work. He's so good at making banners too. Look at this white rose. Isn't that amazing? I remember he joined late. I came in and just killed him a bunch. He never trusted me ever again. Let's see if we can find Dyson's other base. I think it's over here. Oh, here's something. Yeah, he built a uh, cobblestone generator. Because if you use leaves full of water, it won't break the leaves. But it will like, you can make... Um, Lava and trees or I don't know something he did something here and it's cool. So multiple contraptions. Oh, no He put a, a tree chopper so it puts trees in there and it breaks them and it's all good. Okay, that's what it is uh, He has a cobble a moss generator here or something and then here's his other base I remember this base because I filled it with drown heads and it took forever to get rid of those He has like an observatory and I think this is a sugar cane Yeah, sugar cane farm and just a little underground base. He started working on with a beacon. Just, you know, all the essentials you start getting out for a base. Nothing too crazy, though. So kudos to Dyson. I think Dyson's my oldest member. I think he's the first one to join me on Season 1. So he'll always have a special place in my heart. Okay, let's move on to Nightmare's base. I think hers is no way far north. Oh, yeah, here it is. A little bit western than I thought it was. Uh, really cool house she built. Uh, I think she was still in the process of it. Uh, I like her nether portal. Very cool design for that. Pretty good. Pretty good. As I have kept saying a bunch. And a few essentials. She taught me that you can get heads from foxes. <laughs> That's where I got my head collection from. Like, oh, cool. Let's collect them all. Um, so, yeah. Kudos to her. I think her and Shad had a secret project they're working on. But I think they never got it finished. I don't know where it's at. Check their videos to check chat or contact chat if you want to learn more about that. But let's head back to my base. That's all the major things that I'm aware of. There's other small builds, different stuff. I know Nick and JJ had some secret builds, like just holes in the ground out in the wilds and a few other things here and there. But that's all the major stuff. I'm probably missing some. If I'm missing some, just post in the comments. And, you know, that way I know for the future. Uh, but let's head back to my base, showcase my collections. Underneath my iron golem farm, I actually have, I didn't show it before, a gunpowder farm down here. 
Um, it's the same design I used last season. It's just the disc, the, the one layer disc design with with snow golems. Very efficient design. Never ran out of gunpowder. Never had an issue ever, like ever. Uh, I then had a big sugarcane farm. I had a manual one over here, and then I made I made one, and I never needed sugarcane ever again. Uh, since I was collecting all the mob heads, I had to make all like the frog farms and all that. I have axolotls over here because I was trying to get the rare one and I miscalculated. Oh, let me take off my... I don't have boots on. I don't have to worry about that. But I was collecting all the axolotls. I got so many of them, <laughs> their deaths. But yeah, so the gunpowder works is just uh, it's just zombies and they fall down and they die and collect their gunpowder. But yeah, let's go through the heads. We'll do my collections and then we'll pretty much wrap it up from there. Uh, I got pretty much, I think, 75% of the heads. I was missing a few of the rare ones. Um, but I got pretty much all of them. Like, the creeper uh, could have gotten, you know, goat. I got the screaming goat head, but I don't have the regular goat. How weird is that? Let's see. I'm missing one of the parrots. A couple of the pandas. The brown panda was going to be impossible to get. Uh, all the sheep. Each sheep has, like, a, such a small rate of dropping. That was going to be impossible. Slime. I think one of the, skele the skeleton horse. Um, uh, this is one of the zombie types I didn't get. I think one of the withers was impossible to get. I got that guy. I just lost. I don't know where I put it. But I got like 75% of the heads. I thought I did pretty good. All things considered. Um, I got all extra heads too here if you notice. Look, I killed so many pandas because pandas have a bunch of variants and you have to try and breed them. And they're like DNA and all this crap. And I was trying to get the rare brown panda, but it wasn't happening. Uh, I was also collecting all of the, not these guys, sorry, micro blocks from that. And I did about 80% of those. There's just a couple that I was missing. And this was just random from Wandering Traders. Every time I had a wandering trader, I would just go and grab him and grab all of his trades. I had the emeralds, I had the blocks, uh, but there was just a few that I just didn't get. I didn't find with them yet. But I got over 80% of those. That was actually really good as well. Oh, the the feeling of uh, being done with the server. I know it's been done for a while, but like actually letting go is hitting me. I'm, I'm not sad, but I'm, I kind of just feel a little sad. Just something you worked six months on is is done you know but yeah this this base will be surely missed i guess last thing we'll need to do is just look at stats uh let's go to statistics go to general just look at a couple here if it'll want to load in oh, I think that's items um the biggest thing i know i did a lot of deep slate but look at this 50,000, 50,000, quite a bit. Uh, let's see, time's broken. Shears, would I break shears on? Probably leaves. Um, crafted glass. I was doing uh, the trading villagers. I would buy glass from them, turn it into glass panes, sell it back to the cartographer ones. And you'd make like, you know, let's say you spent eight emeralds, you'd make 10 emeralds back overall. Rockets, I crafted so many rockets. And sticks, I did a lot of stick trade in the beginning to the... Uh, Fletcher's for emeralds and of course glass as well. I made so much glass to trade as well um, Iron nuggets. This was to make chains lanterns all that junk I, I used so much of that and then obviously, you know oak planks paper that stuff makes sense emeralds Oh, I don't know where that one actually came from. Oh, let's see times used obviously the pickaxes are the best 150 I'm surprised the shovels not more dirt. Is that? I, use, I guess I place a lot for scaffolding. Uh, let's check out picked up. A lot of dirt, obviously. Uh, stone. Wait, what did I? Yeah, I did. I was right. Uh, stone, cobble, all that junk you pick up a lot. Look at how much rotten flesh I picked up. 12,000. Oh, because from I had multiple drowned farms. That makes sense. And then dropped. Rotten flesh, 4,000. I don't want this. Get out of there. I'm a hoarder, so the fact that I drop stuff at all... Netherrack is because I'm mining it, not picking it up. That makes sense. Potatoes. Why did I drop so many potatoes? That's crazy. Uh, let's check out mobs. Um, killed five LAs, don't ask. Uh, I got killed by an armor stand. You can make that happen. Uh, axolotls. I was trying to get the blue rare one. Bats. A lot of bees. Uh, cats to get their heads. A lot of these, don't judge me too harsh. A lot of these are to get the heads. I was trying to get all, every single mob says so you have to kill them. A creepers got me twice. Um, drowned, that makes sense. Drowned, I had two drowned farms. I only died by them once, though. That's surprising. Five older guardians, one ender dragon, I think. Um, 
I think Rogue got the first kill on that one. Died only four times. Enderman, yeah, that's normal. <laughs> Evokers, foxes, frogs, gas. Died to a, to a gas. I'm surprised uh, more glow squids. Where did I get most of my glowing? Probably stole it. Um, llamas, <laughs> mushrooms. Oh, I remember that one where we went out and we were trying to get the heads. Got it right away. Panda. Surprised that the panda is not higher. Four, five hundred pandas is a lot, actually. Um, pup pillagers got me once. A lot of sheep. Shulkers got me once. Skeletons. The skeleton farm. Skeletons always kill me in the wild because they can snipe you from afar. So that makes sense. I killed one sniffer. Oh, the one sniffer I need a head for. I think I got uh, a lot of spiders. When did I kill tadpoles? Oh, because I was trying to get ahead, of course. They're always that. Uh, ten, I always kill wandering traders, man. Warden got me four times. Because we all did the, the ancient cities in the beginning. Wither only killed eight. That should be higher. I'm surprised that's not higher. I feel like I died like a thousand. I wonder if when you die from it's like withering effect, that counts. Zombie got me once. And then other players got me 19 times. Um, big things here is... Let's see. Damage taken... Um, I know my storage, my, my computer's like, you're running out of storage, you're recording, stop. Let's see, play, time played, I think, is the biggest thing I want to look at. Where is that? Time played, 21 days and 36 hours. That's, that's solid. That almost, that 21 days, I almost spent a month, in the, sa in the past six months, I almost spent a whole month on here. Let's see, um, 6 times 30 days is 180 days, uh, divide by 21, sorry, 21 divide by 180. Uh, I spent, in the last 6 months, I spent 10% of my time on this server. Now granted, some of that time was AFK, gotta factor that in, but 10% of my time is quite a bit for a video game. And um, yeah, I just want to say thank you for everyone that's been part of this series. I know season two is coming to a short end, but I'm going to get a video out pretty soon for the start of my season three. And we have big hopes. I've already talked about it a bit, but I'm going to do even more. So keep an eye out for that. It's going to be exciting. And uh, just thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, and all that junk that you're supposed to do. And I will see you guys later. Thanks for entertaining me through this weird journey. And we can all say goodbye to Wizard Lava together.